Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 12th, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Lark Bunting Watch. Let me briefly say that tomorrow I will be taking part in the World Series of Birding as part of the Montclair Broadwings team. We're a team comprised of former Montclair Hawkwatch counters and friends and family, things like that, raising money for the Montclair Hawkwatch in memory of Elsa Greenstone. I'll talk more about it at the end of the video, but if you'd like to support our team and donate, I'll put the link in the description. Kim and I started out the day at the Braddock Bay West Spit. And migration was excellent. And let me say, this is actually the first time I've gone to the West Spit. I love going out to the East Spit, but in the five years I've been the counter, I've never actually gone birding at the West Spit. And it ended up being pretty magical. Huge warbler migration. We stood in one spot pretty much the whole time for a couple hours and were just staring at these trees as wave after wave of warblers came through. And in addition to those, there were warblers flying high overhead and just birds everywhere. Great variety. So let me get into some of what we saw. There were flocks of hundreds of blue jays migrating high overhead. Here's a pair of wood ducks that were perched up in a tree. Here's some northern flickers. They were doing some sword fighting with their bills. Let's jump into some warblers. Here we have a nice black Bernian warbler. And of course there were plenty of yellow rumped warblers around. Here we have a Nashville warbler. You can see that big white eye ring on a gray head combined with a yellow throat. Gives you Nashville warbler. Here's a nice female type rose-breasted grosbeak. And here's a bird that threw us for a loop a little bit when we saw it. It is a scarlet tanager, but normally when you see a scarlet tanager, not only the head is red, but also all of the body combined with the black wing. So we weren't quite sure what to make of this bird at first. It almost looks like a western tanager with the red head and a more yellowish body, but western tanagers would have wing bars and just look slightly different. But it's just, it's molted the head feathers into the red feathers, but for whatever reason, the body is still in this whitish or yellowish plumage. We had a lot of Cape May warblers. There must have been a big push of those overnight. We had quite a few northern perulas and a lot of palm warblers. Bay-breasted warblers were also around in big numbers. Here we have a great crested flycatcher perched up in a tree. And there were just tons of Baltimore Orioles around, singing, perched up in the trees, flying over, migrating over in flocks of up to four or more at a time. And I liked getting this photo of a black and white warbler in flight. It was also fun to see small migrating flocks of black-capped chickadees. Here's a male American red start. And here we have a really splotchy-looking indigo bunting flying away from us. And the warbler highlight of the day was this male hooded warbler that sang one time and then flew over us. I got over to the hawk platform and you can see it was a beautiful day, sunny with a really high layer of clouds, so really good skies for spotting. The winds started out out of the southwest and were moderate. And throughout the day, they shifted around more west and then to a west-northwest. And once the wind shifted, it kind of shut the flight down. But you'll see we had a lot of excitement in the afternoon to keep us busy. I should also mention that it was quite warm today with temperatures up around 80 degrees at some points. Here's a kill deer that dropped onto the path near the platform. Here's a male orchard oriole. And orchard orioles are more of a chestnut color, not quite as bright as the Baltimore orioles. We had the first willow flycatcher of the season singing Fitzbew out near the boardwalk. There have been a lot of gray catbirds around. Here's one perched up in a tree singing. Here's a merlin zooming by. We can see it's a falcon with those pointy wings and it's got a dark streaking on the underside. And we had some low turkey vultures, and you know what that means. The local Cooper's hawk had to chase them off. Here he is, hot on the heels of the vulture. I think this may be one of the coolest bird photos I've ever taken. The Cooper's hawk actually grabbed the turkey vulture's tail. And with the job successfully done, the Cooper's hawk returned to the nest. Here's a nice look at a juvenile broad-winged hawk. And you can see that it's molting. It's actually grown in some of the dark-tipped 
adult feathers there and missing a tail feather still. Here's a rather white immature bald eagle. This looks like a second year bird. And here's a pale juvenile red-tailed hawk. You can see those dark patagial bars in the shoulder and you can faintly see the belly band and no dark trailing edge and no red tail since it's a juvenile. We had two great egrets fly over together, which was nice since it's a species we haven't been seeing recently, and they gave us a really close look. Here's a female American kestrel. You can see those pointy wings and also the all brown tail with banding. And here's a fresh juvenile bald eagle, what we would call a southern juvenile, a bird born to the south of us over the winter and migrating north for the first time. And here's the bird of the day and probably the bird of the season. It had slowed down for hawks in the afternoon and Kim Steininger had started to scan around looking for white crown sparrows down on the path. And she spotted this bird sitting on the path and she said, look in my scope, what is this bird? And I looked in the scope and I didn't know what it was, um, I, but I knew it was something rare. So I started snapping photos and was able to get some flight shots and it turns out to be a lark bunting which was a life bird for her and for me and for a lot of people who came out to see it today a lot of people came out and the bird was kind of back and forth between the path and the shrubs and it was being seen every couple minutes then it would disappear for a couple minutes but one time it disappeared for about a half hour and there were a lot of people on the platform who hadn't got to see it yet. And some of them started to walk around to different areas of the park. And one of them discovered that it was singing up in a tree up over the lodge. And uh, there was kind of a stampede over in that direction. So uh, I took this photo of the group looking up at the lark bunting. So everyone had left the platform except for me. And then eventually Kim came back. So the two of us were standing there. And we were watching the others. And the bird flew, and we watched them all turn and follow it. And it came over, and it landed on the corner of the hawk platform. So I was able to get amazing photos. And if you're not familiar with lark buntings, they're actually the state bird of Colorado. So that's the part of the country that they're usually found in. So it's very rare to find one in New York State. There's only a handful of records. And here's one last look, and you can see it's got this really distinctive white patch on the wing that kind of becomes a white line when it closes the wings. Here's Kim on the Hawk Watch platform looking at the lark bunting. You can see it perched down there on the corner of the platform. And we decided to take a selfie with the lark bunting in the background, which you can see I have circled. Taking a look at the eBird checklists from today, at the West Spit, we had 77 species, so excellent morning out there. And at the Hawkwatch, we had 70 species, and the lark bunting was the real star of the show today, but we had a good variety of other species as well. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 311 turkey vultures, one osprey, 20 bald eagles, three northern harriers, 13 sharp-shinned hawks. For beautios, we had 24 broadwings and 20 red tails. And for falcons, we had four kestrels and one merlin for a total of 397 migrants. That brings the May total to 8,068 and the season total to 44,893. The new species for the season today were hooded warbler, magnolia warbler, chestnut-sided warbler, scarlet tanager, willow flycatcher, and lark bunting. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking partly to mostly cloudy with the high in the low 70s, winds north-northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So that's a uh, mostly unfavorable wind direction. It'll be fairly light, so should be some activity, but would only expect light to moderate migration. For Sunday, it's looking mostly cloudy early and then partly cloudy, high only in the low 60s, and light northerly winds. So cooler temperatures, but again, a somewhat unfavorable wind that will push the migrants away from the lake shore. So expect light, maybe moderate migration. And for Monday, it's looking partly cloudy, high around 70, and winds west at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So a little bit on the stronger side compared to what we've had recently, but should get moderate migration.
Now let me talk a little more in depth about the World Series of Birding team that I'm on, the Montclair Broadwings. Team members include former hawk counters, interns, hawk watchers, friends, and family of the Montclair Hawk Watch in New Jersey Audubon Sanctuary located in Montclair, New Jersey. We are counting bird species around the world during the special 40th World Series of Birding to support the Montclair Hawk Watch. The Hawk Watch was founded by members of the Montclair Bird Club in 1957 and is the second oldest continuous Hawk Watch in the United States. Counting for Elsa is the theme of our team. The late Elsa Greenstone, a former Montclair Bird Club president who coordinated the Hawk Watch for over 30 years, was a noted hawk migration expert and educator and was responsible for introducing thousands of people to the wonder of raptors. This cause is close to my heart because I was the spring counter at the Montclair Hawk Watch in 2018. And if we take a look through some of the photos, we have a nice painting by David Sibley. And the one cool thing about the Montclair Hawk Watch is you have the Manhattan skyline off in the distance, which you can see here. Here's a sign for the Montclair Hawk Watch group of people hawk watching. Now when I did it, I did a spring count, which isn't from this top platform. It's on the other side of the quarry from the park over there. And here we have Elsa teaching a young girl about hawks. And there's that view I was talking about. Just a, a lot of fun to uh, look out there on a slow hawk day and look at the new World Trade Center and try to find the Statue of Liberty and just you know, from someone from small town Pennsylvania seeing the big city like that and all these famous buildings and landmarks was a lot of fun. And again, here's Elsa doing what she did best. So again, if you would like to donate, I'll put the link in the description. All right, what an absolutely long and crazy day. Such great birding at the West Spit in the morning then a decent hawk flight throughout the early hours of the hawk watch. Then it slowed down. But then we had all the excitement from the lark bunting. And we'll see what tomorrow brings. Like I said, I'll be out participating as part of the World Series of Birding Montclair Broadwings team. Raising money for the Montclair Hawk Watch. I think the plan is to just bird Braddock Bay Park. Uh, normally I'd hit other spots, but with that lark bunting around, I'd like to get there early. And get the word out if the bird is still there. Since it's the weekend, I'm sure there's a lot of people willing to drive a few hours to get lark bunting on their New York life list, year list, whatever. So um, might try to make a century run there in Braddock Bay Park, maybe hit 100 species. The past couple days, we've hit 100 species between the, the different spots that we've hit. So definitely possible this time of year as we are hitting peak warbler migration. And as we saw today, you never know what's going to show up at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. So I hope to see you out at the platform soon. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.